corresponding actions and we, we started to talk about uh, worry and doubt and fear so we, we, we started on that some weeks ago and this is taken from the Bible faith series and so we're going to continue um, with that praise the Lord now before um, or as we continue with our topic on worry and doubt I want to just open up with two passages of scripture to really just set the tone of the teaching today. One of them you're very familiar with because we've, we've used it on, on, on our last uh, talk that I gave on, on the topic of worry. We're going to continue with that. So we're going to start by reading Romans 15 and verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. And the Bible says, and I'm reading this from the, uh, the, the Passion Translation, and the Bible says, whatever was written beforehand is meant to instruct us in how to live. The scriptures impart to us encouragement and inspiration so that we can live in hope and endure all things. Now this is quite a, a, an important passage of scripture because God gives us his word both to encourage and to inspire and to edify us. Amen. Amen. And in the King James it says, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So each time we share the scriptures, we are learning something about the characters of the Bible, who went through different challenges, who went through, had different issues, but they were able to come through them and we can learn from them. And that's the purpose of having the scriptures in front of us, so that we can learn from the, not only the mistakes that people had made, but also we can learn about the choices they made to be modern conquerors. Amen? Amen? So whatever was written beforehand is meant to instruct us in how to live. The scriptures impart to us encouragement and inspiration so that we can live in hope and endure all things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And then we have Philippians 4, Verses 6 and 7. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 says this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. Now you've heard me mention this passage of scripture uh, many times, and it's just to remind us not to worry about anything, but pray about everything. Everything That's Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 from the Living Bible. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Praise the name of the Lord. Now when we feel that things are out of our control, we tend to spend all our time worrying. Yet most of the terrible things we imagine will happen never do, do they? You know, we torture ourselves, don't we, worrying about things. And the things that we are so concerned about, or what we will imagine will happen, never happens. And we should understand, however, that worrying never changes the situation or makes the situation any better, does it? What worrying does is that it sends a message to ourselves and those around us that we are helpless and have nowhere else to turn. However, as born-again believers, we believe that God has everything in his control. And if he really does have things in his control, and we truly believe that he does, then we have nothing 
to worry about. We just need to trust that God will take care of everything according to his plan. Amen? Amen. So, so true. Jesus commanded us not to worry. In Luke 12, from verse 22, he makes this very important statement, and I'm reading this from the Passion Translation, Luke 12, from verse 22. Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Listen to me. Never let anxiety enter your hearts. Never worry about any of your needs, such as food or clothing. For your life is infinitely more than just food or the clothing that you wear. Take the carefree birds as your example. Do you ever see them worry? They don't grow their own food or put it in a storehouse for later. Yet God takes care of every one of them, feeding each of them from his love and goodness. Isn't your life more precious to God than a bird? Be carefree in the cares of God. Does worry add anything to your life? Can it add one more year or even one more day? So if worrying adds nothing but actually subtracts from your life, why would you worry about God's care of you? Think about the lilies. They grow and they become beautiful, not because they work hard or strive to clothe themselves, yet not even Solomon wearing his kingly garments of splendour could be compared to a field of lilies. If God can clothe the fields and meadows with grass and flowers, can't he clothe you as well? Oh struggling one with so many doubts, I repeat it, don't let worry enter your life. Live above the anxious cares about your personal needs. People everywhere seem to worry about making a living, but your Heavenly Father knows your every need and will take care of you. Each and every day He will supply your needs as you seek His Kingdom passionately above all else. So don't ever be afraid, dearest friends. Your loving Father joyously gives you His Kingdom realm with all its promises. Isn't that beautiful? So even Jesus reminds us not to worry or to be anxious, but to trust God that he will take care of us. Amen? The Amplified Bible puts it like this. And Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious and troubled with cares about your life as to what you will have to eat or about your body as to what you will have to wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Observe and consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more worth are you than the birds? And which of you, by being overly anxious and troubled with cares, can add a cubit to his stature, or a moment, or a unit of time to his age, the length of his life. If then you are not able to do such a little thing as that, why are you anxious and troubled with cares about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither wearily toil nor spin nor weave. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, his splendour, and magnificence was not arrayed like one of these. But if, if God so clothes the grass in the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you, O ye people of little faith? And you do not seek by meditating and reasoning to inquire into what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be of anxious, troubled mind, unsettled, excited, worried, and in suspense. For all the pagan world is greedily seeking those things, 
and your Father knows that you need them. Only aim at and strive for and seek his kingdom and all these things shall be supplied to you also. Do not be seized with alarm and struck with fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you his kingdom. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, the scriptures a lot of the times are so self-explanatory. Amen. Amen. And as we learned previously, here is what the Apostle Paul told the church at Philippi from Philippians 4, 6 and 7. And again, I'm reading this from the Passion Translation. It says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will make the answers known to you through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's the Passion Translation. Even more, we read, we read it from the Living Bible earlier on. Now we read it from the Passion Translation. Now we're going to read it from the Amplified Bible. Praise God. It says this. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. Well, who are you to make your wants known to? You make them known to God. Amen. And God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of soul, assured of his salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with his earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So when you seek the face of God, God will surround you with his peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Now it is clear that God does not want you or I to worry about anything. Instead of your mind being in constant turmoil concerning the cares and day-to-day -day struggles of life, God has planned for your mind to be protected and guarded by his Peace. Amen. Amen. And I'd rather be guarded by God's peace than surrounded by worry, wouldn't you? Mm. I would rather be surrounded by the peace and the strength and the power and the anointing of God than be surrounded by worries. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Luke 12 from verse 29 to 32, and this is from the NIV, says, And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan world runs after all such things. And your Father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? When he talks about giving us the kingdom, he's talking about his royal power, his kingship, his dominion rule. It refers to the reign of the Messiah. Amen. Amen. We've accepted Jesus Christ as our personal saviour and he rules and he reigns within us. Amen. Amen. And that's why he's encouraging us not to worry. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why we worry is because we forget who we are. Mm. We forget that we are not like the people of this world. No. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. 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 We forget that we have a Heavenly Father who knows our every movement, who knows exactly what we need even before we ask. His eyes are ever watching over us, guiding, protecting and supplying our needs. Amen. Amen. And I want to say at this point that this next statement that I'm going to make may sound a bit harsh to so many people. But it is important for us to grasp it. Amen? Amen. When we worry, we are actually doubting God's love and concern for us. We are doubting God's ability to do what he says he will do. We do that when we worry. 
What we're saying is, God, you can't deal with this. What we're saying is, God, this is too hard for you to handle. And that's not a very good place to be at when we serve a big God who is our creator, who encourages us in his word not to worry, but to trust him. Amen. Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. Amen. Amen. Why would the Bible say that if God wants us to worry? No. God doesn't want us to worry about anything, mm. but he wants us to trust him in yeah. everything. Amen. Amen. Jesus says this in the same Luke 12, but verse 22, this is from the Passion Translation. So don't ever be afraid, dearest friends. Your loving Father joyously gives you his kingdom realm with all its promises. Amen. Amen. Don't be afraid, dearest friends. Your loving Father gives you his kingdom realm with all of its promises. Amen. There is nothing we should fear or be worried about. It has pleased the Heavenly Father to give us the kingdom. Amen. Amen. We have it now. Royal power. Dominion rule. Christ the Messiah in us. Amen. Amen. Join ears with Jesus of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We have everything we need. Salvation. Healing. Protection. Divine provision. Amen. Amen. God has given us all things in Christ. Amen. Amen. Romans 8 verse 32. This is from the Passion Translation. For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of his son. Yes. And since God freely offered him up as a sacrifice for us all, he certainly won't withhold from us anything else he has to give. Amen. Amen. Mighty powerful passage of scripture there. So as we cast worry, fear and doubt out of our minds and set them on seeking the kingdom of God, all the things we need will be given to us. Amen. Amen. And if we believe, as the scripture says, that God has already given us all things in Christ, then we do not need to worry. Amen. Because the Bible says that my God supplies all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, along with worry comes fear and doubt. Worry is one of the most destructive weapons that Satan uses against us because along with it comes fear and doubt. Mm. Worry causes believers to be double-minded. Receiving from God what we need requires us not to doubt. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in Mark 11, verses 23 and 24, from the Passion Translation. Listen to the truth I speak to you, Jesus said. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain being lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea, and believes what he says will happen, it will be done. This is the reason I urge you boldly, believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus is telling us here. And the same scripture from the, from the Amplified Bible says this. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. Amen. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Amen? Amen. So we must believe what God's Word says. We must believe that whatever God says He will do, He will do. Amen. The book of James tells us, in James 1, verses 6 and 7, and I'm reading this from a couple of versions, King James first and foremost, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Now, let's read it from the, 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 the Passion Translation. 
Just make sure you ask, empowered by confident faith, without doubting that you will receive. For the oblivious person believes one minute and doubts the next. Being undecided makes you become like the rough seas that are driven and tossed by the wind. You're up one minute and tossed down the next. When you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Did you hear that? When you are half-hearted and wavering, it leaves you unstable. Can you really expect to receive anything from the Lord when you are in that condition? No, you cannot. And then the Amplified Bible just gives us a round off here where it says, only it must be faith in faith that he asks with no wavering, no hesitating, no doubting. For the one who wavers or hesitates or doubts is like the billowing surge out of the sea that is blown hither and thither and tossed by the wind. For truly, not, let not such a person imagine that he will receive anything he asks from the Lord. All the scriptures that I've read to you are self-explanatory. They're encouraging us to trust God in every situation, in every aspect of our lives, in our choices, in our decision making. They're telling us and encouraging us not to worry, but to trust God. Not to fear or doubt or to waver, but to trust God. Amen. Amen. What does worry do? Well, first it disarms us. Secondly, it paralyzes us. Thirdly, it causes us to lay down our shield of faith that covers or protects us from Satan's darts. Fourthly, it causes us to become vulnerable to his attacks and keeps us living in a cycle of defeat. That is not the condition that God wants us to be in. That is the condition that the devil wants you to be in. The devil wants to disarm you. The devil wants to paralyze you. The devil wants to cause you to lay down your shield of faith. Yeah. It is the devil that wants you to become vulnerable yeah. so that you can get hold of what he's telling you. Mm. But we come against that in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And we must remember that God will do what he has promised. Yes. His word is amen and amen. Yes, oh, glory be to God. God. And I want to make it very clear Either we believe God's word is true, or we believe that it is a lie. Come on. Either we believe God's word is true, or we believe that it is a lie. When we worry, we do not believe God's word is true. When we hold on to worry, when we allow worry to overwhelm us and to overtake us, we do not believe that God's word is true. Because if we did, we wouldn't worry, would we? Amen. Also, when we doubt God, we doubt God's love. We doubt God's total provision for us. We doubt God's covenant promises to us. And we doubt that God is able or that he will do what he has promised he will do. So whenever we worry or we doubt, we don't believe that God will come through for us and that is not a healthy place to be at amen? amen the bible encourages us it says don't worry about anything but pray about everything, everything. Yes. if the bible tells us to pray it is because god wants to answer us yes. amen. amen god wants to come through for us amen. Amen. amen so let us not doubt god but let us trust him amen, amen. remember this satan's strategy is to bombard our minds with worry fear and doubt yeah. to disarm you mm. to paralyze you yeah. to take faith out of you yeah. so that you don't trust god mm. and many of us spend all of our time wallowing with stuff in our head and allowing it to take control and allowing it to disarm us and to paralyze us to the point that we are unsuccessful in the things that we know we should be successful in mm. but lord have mercy on us today amen, amen. Here are some points that we just need to remember and consider. After Satan attacks us through our circumstances, 
His strategy is to immediately bombard our minds with worry, fear and doubt. Until we are so overwhelmed by our circumstances, we are unable to release our faith. The devil doesn't want you to get hold of faith. You know, we've been talking about Bible faith. We've been talking about the benefits of Bible faith and trusting God and having faith in God's ability to do what he says he will do. Amen. Amen. Well, the devil doesn't want you to get a hold of that today. No. But I'm saying that we need to remind ourselves of what the scripture says. Yeah. I'm going to read from Mark 4. Mark 4 from verse 35 to 40. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat up into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillar. And they awake him, saying unto him, Master, care us not thou that we perish. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? A lot of these scriptures I'm sharing with you, we're familiar with, but we need to get them really into our spirit. Amen? The disciples, they faced circumstances that paralyzed them with fear. Their minds were full of worry and doubt and they panicked. Imagine them on the boat in the middle of the sea. It was dark. The sea and the wind were howling around them, threatening to sweep them off the boat. The disciples had their eyes on their circumstances. They had their eyes on the fierce storm. They were so busy fighting the waves and bailing the water out of the boat that they forgot that Jesus was in the boat with them. Their minds were so full of fear, full of worry and doubt, they were unable to release their faith to believe for a miracle in their own lives. And remember, they had seen Jesus perform many miracles among the people. But the more they kept their eyes on their circumstances, the more worried they became. It's so true. Now I read the scripture earlier when I told you that whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our yeah. learning. We can learn from this. God wants us to trust him. They had Jesus right near them. They saw him do miracles. They saw him turn lives around and lives transform. But they forgot the power that they had in the boat because they were so busy worrying about their situation. Now you can understand them being worried. If you're in that situation, you know, what am I going to do here? But Jesus was right by them. And there were times in our lives when Satan attacks us through our circumstances and we feel like we are in a fierce storm. And our problems like waves of the sea are beating against us. They come crashing down upon us, sweeping us over until it seems that we are going to drown in them. How often many of us feel that way, amen? amen? We feel that there is no way, there's no solution, there's no hope. Our mind is so locked up in our circumstances and our problems. And frantically, we fight, we strive, doing everything we know to do in our own strength to solve our own problems. Just like the disciples, our minds are gripped with worry, fear and doubt. And this is exactly how Satan wants you and I to react. His desire is to get your mind in a vice-like grip yes. through fear, worry and doubt until your mind is in a constant turmoil. Mm. And the more you keep your eyes on your circumstances, the more your mind is filled with worry and anxiety to the point that you are unable to release your faith yes. to receive what you need from God. But I want to say to you today, don't let the devil distract you. Because what happens? Worry chokes the word and paralyzes our faith. Help us, Lord. The disciples had been with Jesus when he had healed the multitudes. They had witnessed him open blind eyes. 
cast out demons, open deaf ears, and heal all manner of diseases. Yet their minds were so full of worry and doubt, they were unable to exercise their faith and belief that Jesus would deliver them out of the storm. But I want to say once again, worry chokes the word and paralyzes our faith. Don't let that happen to you. I do not want that to happen to me. I do not want to let worry choke the word that is inside of me. Amen. Amen. In the times we are now living in, a number of Christians react to their circumstances the same way that the disciples reacted to the storm. Their minds are so full of worry, so full of fear, so full of doubt that the word of God that they have received into their hearts becomes ineffective mm. because it is not mixed with faith. Right. They cannot claim God's covenant promises mm. because their minds are filled with doubt. And although they may cry to God to deliver them, to meet their needs in their lives, to turn their circumstances around, they cannot receive because they have not asked in faith without doubting. Mm. And the word cannot produce results until it is combined with faith. That's right. We must have faith in God's ability that he will do what he says he will do. Amen. 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 Don't let the devil choke the word that is in you. Mm. But have faith in God. Have faith in God's ability that he will do what he says he will do. Amen. Amen. Luke 21 and verse 34 says this. But take heed to yourselves. And be on your guard, lest your hearts be overburdened and depressed and weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness and worldly worries and cares pertaining to the business of this life. And lest that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. Many times when people worry, some people drink. You understand? They get into a state of giddiness, into a state of drunkenness. And they get depressed. But we have to take heed and guard our minds so that we don't become overburdened with such things. Amen. Yes. The one strategy that Satan is using most to keep the majority of Christians living in defeat and unprepared for the return of Jesus is that he is attacking and filling their minds so full of worries and cares of this life that the word that they heard preached has become ineffective. Yes. It is not producing the results. It is being choked by worry and doubt. And it is clear that we must examine our lives to see if we have allowed our minds to be sidetracked overburdened by the daily pressures of providing the basic necessities of life for ourselves and families. My, 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 my. So when, as we're thinking about those thoughts for a moment, we're going to now look at developing a Christian attitude to deal with worry. Amen? Amen. Worry is contrary to the attitudes that God would have Christians to be involved with. Why we fails to take God at his word in any situation. Why he causes us to become self-centered and self-oriented in dealing with the situation. And rather than having a divided mind concerning the situation, we are to look to God and believe his word in the midst of it. Amen? Amen. We must do this. So we're going to look at some scriptures now as we come down. Because we're going to develop a Christian attitude to deal with worry. Amen. Psalm 37 verses 1 to 7 says this. And I'm reading this from the Passion Translation. Don't follow after the wicked ones or be jealous of their wealth. Don't think for a moment that they're better off than you. They and their short-lived success will soon shrivel up and quickly fade away, like grass clippings in the hot sun. Keep trusting in the Lord, and do what is right in His eyes. Fix your heart on the promises of God, and you will be secure, feasting on His faithfulness. Make God the utmost delight and pleasure of your life, and He will provide for you what you desire the most. Amen. Give God the right to direct your life. 
And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness, as sure as the dawning of a new day. He will manifest as your justice, as sure and strong as the noonday sun. Amen. Amen. Quiet your heart in his presence and pray. Keep hope alive as you long for God to come through for you. And don't think for a moment that the wicked in their prosperity are better off than you. Amen. Amen. Change your thinking. Yes. Come in line with God's word. Yes. The wicked are not better off than you. No. They are no better off than you. No. We are better off than they are. Amen. We have a hope. There is eternity. We have a God who created us. We have a God who said not to worry. You know why? Because I'm going to let you, once you trust in me, that is when I'm at my best. Amen. Amen. That's the God that we serve. And then we have Psalm 42, verse 11. So I, and I'm reading this from the Living Translation. So I say to my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be disturbed. For I know my God will break through for me. Amen. Amen. Then I'll have plenty of reasons to praise him all over again. Yes, living before his face is my saving grace. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. You see, these are the scriptures that you need to feed into your mind. When worry tries to have its way, read the word of God. Amen. Amen. Listen to Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your burden on the Lord, releasing the weight of it, and he will sustain you. He will never allow the consistently righteous to be moved, made to slip, fall, or fail. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And when we read it from the Passion Translation, which is the one I sent up this morning to all of our wonderful brethren, it says here, so here's what I've learned through it all. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. Amen. And measureless grace will strengthen you. Isn't that beautiful? Praise Come on. Leave all your cares and anxieties at the feet of the Lord. And measureless grace will strengthen you. This is, this is, this is the Bible's instructions. You understand that? Amen. This is God's word to us. Telling us not to worry, but to place all of our cares and anxieties at the Lord's feet. And measureless grace will strengthen us. His grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Amen. Matthew 6, 31 to 33. This is from the Living Bible. So don't worry about, don't worry at all about having enough food and clothing. Why be like the heathen? For they take pride in all these things and are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly Father already knows perfectly well that you need them. Yes. And he will give them to you if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. Isn't that beautiful? The scriptures explain it very, very well. First Peter 5 and verse 7. The, this is from the Passion Translation. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him. And leave them there. For he always tenderly cares for you. Amen. Amen. Leave them where? Leave them there. Amen. And then we have Philippians 4, 6. This is from the Passion Translation. We've read it from the Living Bible. This is now from the Passion. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day. Offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Amen. Tell him every detail of your life. Isn't that beautiful? Come on. Just give it to God. God doesn't want you or I to worry. Amen. He wants us to trust him. And then we have Psalm 62 and verse 8. You need to make a note of this because you need to say them. Okay. This is from the Amplified Bible. Trust in, lean on, rely on and have confidence in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. Amen. A fortress and a high tower. And then it says Selah. So stop and think about that. 
God is a refuge for us. He is a fortress and a high tower. Stop and think about that. So when worry comes, stop and recognize and shout out that God is a refuge for me. He is a fortress and he is my high tower. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. And then we have Psalm 94 and verse 19. I've missed some out here, but we're going to just read on. Psalm 94 and verse 19. Whenever my busy thoughts were out of control, the soothing comfort of your presence calmed me down and overwhelmed me with delight. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Overwhelmed me with what? Delight. With delight. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. Amen. I love that. Let's read that together. Come on. I just look. Not Psalm 94, 9. Let's read that together. One, two, three, go. Whenever my busy thoughts were out of control, the soothing comfort of your presence calmed me down and overwhelmed me with delight. Amen and amen. Isn't that beautiful? God is a good God. Amen. And then we have John 14 and verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives the right gift to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Amen. So I therefore refuse to be agitated. I refuse to be disturbed. I refuse to be fearful, intimidated, uncowardly, and unsettled in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And the last scripture for today is this. Colossians 3, 15 from the Amplified Bible. And let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as empire, umpire, continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state to which as members of Christ's one body you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Amen. Amen. So not only are you to let the peace of God have harmony in your life, but you know what? You are to be thankful and appreciative and give thanks and praise to God at all times. And whenever the enemy tries to come at you with doubt, with worry, with fears, with concerns, let me tell you this. Let him know that you know the word. Amen. Amen. That you refuse to be disturbed. You refuse to be agitated. You refuse to be unsettled. You refuse to accept the word worry and doubt and fear and you trust in God completely amen? amen and you allow the peace of God to surround you like it's never surrounded you before amen, amen. and for that we give the Lord praise yes. our God is a good God amen? amen and he does not want us to worry about anything but the moment you find yourself begin to worry the Bible says you know what Pray about everything. Okay? Pray about? Everything. Praise the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve indeed. Amen and amen and amen. And so, those who are listening today, we wanted to say, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Let the Lord know all about it so that he can surround you with his peace. Amen. amen. And for those of you who are listening today who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who can give you peace, the one who can calm the storm, the one who can change situations, you can know him today. You can receive salvation today. Just repeating this after me. Let us just say that together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word. You said in your word. Him that cometh to me, he that to me 
I would in no wise cast out. I would in no wise cast out. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am calling upon your name. I desire you to save me now. You said in your word, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I believe that he died for my sins according to the scriptures. I believe that he is raised from the dead from my, for, for my justification. With my mouth, I confess him as my saviour and I confess him now that I am saved. Amen. If you said that prayer today, that is the best decision that you could ever make in your life. Trust God. Because God is a good God. He is not unreasonable. Amen. Amen. So we bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise in the house. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord is a good